Welcome to How Preschool Teachers Do It. This is Allison Kentos. I am an early childhood educator. And this is Cindy Tarabush. I am an early childhood consultant. This podcast is for parents and early childhood professionals. Let our experience and research-based knowledge become your guide. Good Monday, preschool peeps. Hi, peeps. If you're listening to this on the day that it is actually releasing, it's Labor Day in the United States. So yeah. happy Labor yeah. Day. Happy Labor Day, peeps. And you know, we decided to do a Labor Day themed episode that you can listen yeah. to this anytime and it's going to hold true for a while. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> we, labor talk. Let's do some labor let's, talk. Let's do it. Let's get into it. And so <laughs> Workforce shortage. If if you work in a program that teaches early learners, you probably know that there is a workforce shortage in yes. this field. And that has a great impact on the whole society because people need child care to work. And in order to have child care functioning, people have to be going to work. We're going to keep doing these circular issues. It's about very that? circular. <laughs> there are a lot of circular issues related yeah. to the workforce shortage. Ultimately, of course, the concern on this podcast is the ability to provide a quality early childhood education and experience for young children mm -hmm. based on what we know helps them to achieve, but is developmentally appropriate. And that's always our concern, right? Yeah. Yeah. But there are these circular issues sort of floating around child care that is greatly impacting all of that, including yeah. Program's ability to provide children with a high quality, developmentally appropriate environment. And that's what it yeah. really boils down to. Yeah. I think there's a lot of talk now, or I sense that there's a lot more talk now about the fact that there are workforce shortages in all sectors of lower yeah. paying jobs. Yes. Well, yeah. I mean, because those are the jobs that you're face to face a lot of times with other people. <laughs> and it's imagine not really people not yeah. wanting to do that. <laughs> yeah, imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's some point at which I think people look at what they're making and go, oh, yeah, this is not worth this is whatever worth your it. stress is about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I think that we have to consider how is that impacting? the children in our society, if we're going to talk the field of early childhood care and education, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I know that your local eatery is short staffed and I know that yeah. your local supermarket, supermarket is short staffed. Is, There's a, yeah. a diner right by us. You know, Alice and I are in New Jersey. We're like the diner capital of the world. We're, yeah. <laughs> there, are, there are diners right by us who are closing certain days and shortening their hours. And I recognize that there is a workforce shortage everywhere you know, my, my diner's workforce shortage impacts the people who would potentially work there and right. my ability to get the food that I want. But now we're talking young children and the future right. of the world because young children are the future. So right. let's, let's talk about that circular thing that's going on where many of our listeners work. And I think it's important for families to understand it too. Yes, 100%, I think you should all be paid more. Right? 110%. 110 yeah. I think we should all yeah. be paid more. Yeah. Th that said, there is sort of a core issue to all of this. And that's this. If there is a workforce shortage, programs can't take more children because they don't have enough adults. And if they can't take more children because they don't have enough adults, they also can't hire more adults. Right. Because they don't have the income. So they let me try that again. If you they also don't have the need, right? Because there's correct. not a lot of kids. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. so yeah. if if there's a workforce shortage, we can't take more kids in childcare. And if we can't take more kids in childcare, that causes a workforce shortage. Right. Um, right. Which impacts everything, right? So like now you can't hire more people so the people who do work there get more stressed out because they're not getting the help that they need and the children aren't getting 
the care necessarily that they need, right? Like, so you have a stressed out teacher yeah. who's coming from a stressed out spot. It might not be the best setting there. You know what I mean? And they can't do, you can't do it all. One person cannot do it all for these children. It's you not know? a great situation when no. all of the adults are stressed and the stress yeah. of workforce shortage is at every level, wherever you are, right? Again, think about like the restaurants and diners. That stress is at every level. The work who, workers who are there who have to cover everything. The management yeah. who's worried about the ability to cover everything and the quality of service. You know, in early childhood settings, it's the, the staff, the teaching staff and teaching teams who struggle and are stressed out because of that. And then the administrators and directors struggle because they're worried about being able to meet the needs of the children and families with the workforce numbers and the, right. the number of people that they have. The stress at every level, that's what we need to figure out. How do right. we mitigate this workforce shortage? Because it's one of the things that's going to collapse early care in this country and it's going to collapse it almost like an implosion, I think. The stress yeah. of the people, the people wanting to leave that stress. Well, um, that I mean, really. And I know that people sometimes point to the fact that in, you know, in the United States, there's more money being spent on universal preschool in our public schools. And, you know, people, a lot of people point at that, but that's not the only issue people it's not the only issue it's, that's not the only issue that you have so can we all just please stop pointing fingers everywhere and realize that there is a systemic problem here there's a problem with a system frankly that depends on number of people versus quality of what we put out there does that yeah, make sense that makes sense Right. And I if, feel like you're going to lose some of those really good quality people, those good quality employees, because the stress is too much. So there's only so long that you as an adult can go into a workplace and be that stressed out. You know, it's right. going to get to a point where like, listen, I have my teaching degree. I have this, or I love working here and I love the kids, but I can't do this anymore. And then you're going to lose. And then you're going to have no one. And I yeah. think the, I think the problem with so much being privately funded is that you're dependent on per child per head money. That's yeah. it. It needs to be the whole system of how childcare is funded needs to be rethought. Rethought. Yeah. Rethink it, folks. You know, our public school system is not is funded per child in a, in a way because a way. the amount of money that they get for the government has to do with your population. Yes. For example, in our state where, where we live, the town I live in, the population of young people decreased over a certain number of years. They didn't have as many people going into the public schools. And, and so they didn't get as much state funding and actually had to close one of the public schools. Yeah. Yeah. We have many elementary schools in my town. They had to close one of them. Yeah. Because in a way it's per student, but yeah. also they get per student, like for the whole town, it isn't it's the whole as town. Yeah. individualized by school, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah. And, and let's think about the universe of people not using childcare now. Let's think about the people who are working at home and have found another way, a pod of people working at home, mm -hmm. other ways where they don't have to pay for childcare, the people yeah. who are still not employed and not needing childcare, the people who um, have now workplaces are starting to set up where we can help you figure out childcare so that yeah. you can come to the office the one or two days a week, we're going to have you come to the office, the whole structure of how people have functioned yeah. is changing. And you know what, Allison, I was on Twitter earlier. Um, yeah. I, I saw a post, it was so interesting. It was tweeted from a teacher saying um, that that teacher was very worried about her own child going to childcare because of the children being unable to be vaccinated and the spread mm -hmm. of COVID-19 among young children right now and the possible variants. And this teacher yep. said, I'm really, really concerned about my young child going to childcare. So I'm deciding to leave teaching. And I, 
There's right. Like there are people, people making that. these decisions still based on their children. Yes. 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 There's many, many people who have done that this summer where they're like, listen, like this, this variant, I think has scared some people, yeah. you know, if you work with the younger generations, the younger age groups, there is no, there's no way they will ever be vaccinated if they're under five. I don't think that's just not going to happen. So like, why would you put your kid in that situation? And I totally understand making that your priority. You know, I totally understand that. Oh yeah. But that know. changes when the workforce too. Little, if my yeah. kids were little, I don't know what I would decide. Right I, I don't, now. I can't I don't say know. that. I can't say that because I don't have children, but I can totally understand the people who do. Yeah, I get it. Make that decision. I, it's a hard decision, but it's one that I think is valid. And, you know, I yeah. also understand the people who say, okay, I'm going to have to brave it and send my kid with a mask or something I because I too. need to go to work. Yeah, There's, no There's no wrong decision. There's no wrong answer here. Yeah. It, yeah. it is true that the decisions that people are making, the very personal decisions that people are making are really impacting child care's ability to provide quality care because yeah. the less people who send their children, again, the less income, the less ability to hire people, the less people hired, the less children we can take. And it's just yeah. this ongoing thing. So I feel like you can throw money at it if you'd like, but it's got to be like permanent money. One it's of the permanent st- money and it's not. And it's not. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I work with yeah. I work with people from many states. And one of the states that I work with is offering these huge grants to early childhood private programs, huge grants, and they're being paid out over three months. And then what? And then you what? can't so hire that, people based on that. You can't because that covers salary for three months. So after three months, when you lose that money and you were surviving on just having that money and then all of a sudden it's gone, then what? What happens then? Do you lay let's, these even let's off say, then? Like that's let's not say fair. It's a big amount, right? It's a big amount. And you paid out over three months and you realize, okay, I can hire people and pay these salaries for six to eight months off mm-hmm. this money. Yeah. Yeah. then what if the children don't return you're not bringing in the you're income to continue in those salaries if yeah. there's potential closings again and quarantines and families understandably get fed up with that and find other ways to deal yeah, with their lives and their yeah. families yeah then what because then the what? income is not going to be there yeah. And not to mention, even if you do get this massive grant or whatever, you're still, yeah, you can cover salaries as they are now, but that's still not going to draw people because the amount of people, the amount that people get paid when working in childcare is so minimal that people are like, you know what, I'll go do something else for more money, you know, because yeah, there's, so jobs cover, there's jobs everywhere now. There's jobs everywhere, everywhere now that pay double what people yeah. who are taking care of children are making, which is just so sad in itself. You know, that these people who care for our children make such little money. So yeah, you can cover those salaries for, for that little bit, but that, that salary is not going to sustain that person. You know, like it, not when I, you can go is, work anywhere else. You know, And then more. when you work with teachers who are so overwhelmed because of the lack of staff mm-hmm. um, and administrators who are so overwhelmed with the lack of staff with all good intentions toward the children and trying so hard to still provide a wonderful experience for them. It is like psychologically impossible. Yeah. Everybody's all kinds of stressed out. It's, yeah. it's really, you can compartmentalize your life to a certain point, but I'm going to tell you what, if you're not getting breaks and lunchtime because there's no staff to cover you, I'm sorry, you're human. That's going yeah. to impact your ability to interact. It's going to Im- impact your ability to teach with patients. It's going to impact right. everything. And I literally work with places where the staff is like, you know, the administrators are like, I'll tell you what, I can, we don't have enough coverage. I can let you come in late this day or go home early this day, but you can't right. take and your break today. And you, this is, so you're working eight, nine hours with no break. How like it's psychologically, you can't do that. You know, like as a human being, you can only take that for so long. Like it's, 
you're working with children. It's healthy to get away from those children for an hour so yes. you can decompress. But when you don't have that, then the stress keeps building and building and building. And then it's like you're going through what? Eight hours of work. And how do you not lose it? You know what I mean? How do you not? How do you keep going? You know, and then on top of that, like if you were being paid higher, you'd be like, okay, I can maybe balance it out. I get paid a good amount. So it's worth this lack maybe, of break for a week. Maybe. I think you have to be really but dedicated if you're not, to this work. I think you have to be yeah. really dedicated to this work. And I know that there are people who are. And if you are really dedicated to this work and you're thinking, I'm going to power through this time that we're living through because I love this work. Yeah. kudos to you kudos because the children you. really, really need you. We need really yeah. good people with these kids, especially because we don't know what they're witnessing and we don't know what they're going through and what trauma they've experienced during this time. Yeah. They really do need you. And as much as Alice and I love to do more upbeat episodes, I think that a shining <laughs> light has to be yeah. brought to this. this yeah. Not it's, a, it's not an easy fix. And uh, I'm concerned for the children. So here's what I really want to say to those people who are out there doing the work and every day fighting the good fight of what we're all going through. When you're thinking about your priorities, you're stressed out and they're short staff and you're thinking about your priorities, connection with those children is your priority. Creating a trusting, positive connection with the children because all learning comes from that connection. If you can just take a deep breath and enjoy those children who you're with and, and play with them and talk with them. And from that you build learning. Yeah. It's the connection and the relationship that is your number one priority. And you know what? They're going to learn the letter A when they're ready to learn the letter A. Yeah. It is the relationship that matters. So when you're going into a new school year, you have to think my number one goal, my number one priority has to be the relationships I'm setting up with these children. Yeah. yeah. That's it. That's it. And I think that, that everyone who talks about meeting standards and all that stuff, you've they have to prioritize the relationships, folks. Well, the standards yeah, matter. It's, it's de it does matter. I'm not saying that the it standards doesn't, but matter. But this is also not business as usual either. It right is now. not. And, and learning it shouldn't the be treated as that. Happens yes. in relationship and with connection. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to give people time in the beginning of a school year or when they first meet a child to establish that. So could we give yeah. them a minute let's, before let's people take, start saying, yeah. But where is this and where is that and where is this? Right. Right. Let's give them a minute. People need to regroup this year and rethink their curriculum implementation sure. because the children who are entering early childhood settings now have had less play, which we talked about in another episode, less yeah. socialization, which we've been talking about all along. And so I think that professionals need to be looking at their curriculum, which, yes, they're going to implement. But looking at it as, okay, what are my number one priorities for going into this school year? And how do I get to all the goals of this curriculum with children who now have lived their whole early childhood and anything they can well, remember with pandemic about, times? Think about that for a minute. We've been in this for 18 months. And if these children Goodness, are three, it, really? oh. it has, has been, yes, yeah, since March of last year, right? So 18 months. And these children coming into preschool, most of them are three or younger. And so, yeah, their entire half their lives, lives, half their half lives, of their lives, it's half their lives. And the first half they don't remember. So, like, you know what I mean? All that they remember is this pandemic world. So yes. we need to give them that relationship. That's what they need. They're going to be craving that, you know, because they've been, we've been isolated. We've been locked down for a good, what? 12 months of those 18 months. Right. Okay. So around here. Yeah. So take heart yeah. Labor Day, people take heart. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. see you. We know that you're struggling with the workforce shortage. We're bringing yeah. it out on our podcast. Staffs are struggling with a workforce shortage, people. Also, yeah. if you're a family member of a child going to an early childhood setting this year, 
take a beat, give the staff yeah. a break um, yeah. a little bit. There yeah, is a do. workforce shortage there too, just like your other local businesses. Yeah, give some people, give everyone, I don't even want, everyone you see, I think you need to give yes. grace because you have no idea what they're going through. You're yeah. absolutely right, Allison. Give yeah. them a little grace, no matter where you yeah. are, the supermarket, yeah. the restaurant. Every, the bank, everyone. Yep. Like wherever everyone. you are, give people some grace. Everybody is uh, at yeah. the end of their rope. Yeah, I, I saw, I think it's a meme that said, and it was a store front and they had a sign that said, the whole world is short staffed. Please be patient with us. I mean, showed up. really? <laughs> you know? I feel yeah. so bad for these people. Yeah. As yeah. I see them running around places and I do. I feel really it's terrible hard. for what's it's going on. It's a really on. hard time. Yeah. 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 This is needless to say a very interesting Labor Day. It sure is. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Was there anything else we wanted to say other than give everybody a break and start with relationships? <laughs> no, but I think that's a good point. <laughs> I think that's where we stop this yeah, part of the podcast. Yeah. But, but we do have a feedback five that we want to share with you. Oh, yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. We do have a feedback five. We're so excited that this has caught on and that we're getting information from people. Oh, it makes me so excited. <laughs> you have no idea. Cindy knows. Too. She's like, I can't wait to tell Allison. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then so we talk exciting. about it. We get so excited. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's very exciting. So we're going to share today's feedback five with you. Mm-hmm. And um, we're going to ask you as you listen to this to think about what feedback do you have that might potentially end up on the podcast? Yeah. We've mentioned before that we, you know, we can't take all of them, but we will take some of them. And if you send us your ideas, your feedback, your perspective, then we um, may say it. And if you do, please let us know where you're from, which is what today's yeah. feedback person yeah. did. And we were and so psyched. We're I have to so tell you. Excited. We and make psyched. sure in your email yeah. that you grant us permission because we don't want to ever say anybody's name without that. But we would love to start saying where people are from. That would be fun. That <laughs> is fun. We're going to practice yeah. now. Are you ready for yeah. the feedback five, Allison? I'm ready. Okay. Today's feedback five comes from Sharon in South Carolina. Hello, preschool (laughs) peeps in South Carolina. Carolina. (laughs) Okay, so this feedback relates to the episode that we did about show and tell. We talked about the traditional show and tell and then other ways that this could be done that are more developmentally appropriate because kids don't have that long an attention span. Plus we're living in COVID-19 times. So if you want to know what this feedback five is based on, look for our episode about show and tell. Here's what Sharon sent to us. She said that she teaches in what is called the whale class and they have a special whale guessing can, which is made out of an old coffee can. Yeah. It goes home. The can goes home with a, with one child once a week and they rotate it around. So everybody gets a couple of times throughout the year, at least. The child brings the can back with an item inside, as well as three clues about the item. How fun is that? The so the family. What's the best part for me? The clues are the best. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, so the families write out the clues, which is a literacy activity and a math activity. They have to have yeah. one, two, one. three clues. Yeah. They write the clues out, hopefully with their children. Sharon said some children enjoy copying or writing the clues along with their family. So we've got literacy and math and um, she enjoys reading them too. Some of the clues must be so fun. So it gets the families interacting with their children, that socialization in a really high quality way. What happens when the children bring the can back is that the children sit up front with Sharon during large group time and they tell the class the first clue. If the child of course can't read, The teacher reads it, Sharon reads it, and then the child says it louder. Uh, And then that child who brought in the clues and the item gets to call on a child that is sitting, waiting to be called on with their hands up to take a guess about what the thing in the can is. (laughs) So they, they allow the three guesses per clue. So they can, the kids can take three guesses for each of three clues. Okay. which helps not to drag it on, she said. Yeah, yeah. Right, and keeps everybody's attention. 
the children love stumping the class if the item is not guessed. <laughs> Fun. So much fun. <laughs> she said everybody in the class looks forward to bringing home the whale can. It's a time for that child to feel really special and to help lead the class in an activity. And it's super fun for teachers too. I love this idea so much. <laughs> 100%. So Today's feedback much. five. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sharon. So much, Sharon. <laughs> Thank you for climbing yeah. out of the show and tell box and sharing yes. with us a new fun way to do this. Yeah. Oh, so Sharon, awesome I wonder idea. how many people who listen to this podcast and it's widely listened to. I wonder how many people listen to this podcast are going to have a can now. Thanks to you, Sharon. It's going to be awesome. And if you do try it out, please let us know and we'll let Sharon know. <laughs> yes, we have right? Sharon's email address. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> so, yes. That would be awesome. Oh, yes. We're starting a show and tell revolution. <laughs> Or something. I don't know what Something's we're starting. Happening. Here we are. <laughs> right? Awesome. I, I love when people write to us with that out of the box thinking. Yeah. My kids used to watch a show when they were little, I think on Nickelodeon called Out of the Box. And it had this theme song that I always think of. When I think of out of the box think, thinking, I'm always like out of the box. Out of the box. I'm sorry I sang it, everybody. It's really not shit. I don't know for. this show. Oh my I goodness. Mean- <laughs> Next time you talk to my sons, you have to ask them about ask the them box. about it. Ask <laughs> them about out of the box. God will sing it for you. Um, so yes, yeah, <laughs> out of the box is what I think of. If yeah. you have any thoughts about any of our episodes, any ideas like Sharon that you would yeah. like to share with the podcast verse that we reach, yes, <laughs> please podcast-verse. send us some feedback. <laughs> We absolutely 100% love it. Yes, because part of being a peep, I feel like, is networking. And the only way to network is through this technology that we have now. But we're doing it, <laughs> right? We're and trying to give you trying. the <laughs> platform by which to network with each yes. other in a way that's yeah. organized. So yeah. take advantage of our feedback five and share mm-hmm. and take these ideas and run with it. Yeah. Um, and we will catch you next time on the podcast, folks. All right. Bye, peeps. Bye.